A whisper of wind bustling by into a gale, a tornado to try. A cascade of thunder peals from on high. A downpour, a drenching, a waterfall in the sky. A flash of lightning, a scream as they die. Fear the living storm and thus hear its cry. Oh yes, a Matsu. The Storm Dragon, a beautiful, perfect creature, and a beautiful, perfect creature for Rise. It matches the aesthetic. It is an airborne creature in a game all about being airborne. It is a massively loved Elder Dragon, unique, and one that everyone would be happy to see again. It is a Leviathan to return along with the rest of the Leviathans. It could be the Elder Dragon that lives in the Mountain Nest, as signified by the Remobra that follow them everywhere. Though, Amatsu has always had his own arena, but we could dream. But more importantly than any of those qualifications, okay, it is simply one of the most breathtaking creations in all of Monster Hunter. It is elegance and grace, but it is power and it is terrifying in its assertion of it. This is a storm king atop a mountain sat haughtily on a throne of thunder crying into the abyss and sending shivers of pure dread down the spines of all who hear it. Amatsu is the storm personified. It is a hurricane made flesh. It is the grey sky trembling in its fury and descending on all who would dare to stand in its shadow. And it is something that I would dearly love to hunt once again. So let's talk Amatsu, the Storm Dragon. Amatsu, then, is a lot of things. An Elder Dragon, sure, but a Leviathan, too, but not one between the waves, no one that ride the winds. It is a natural disaster rendered in to sentience. This is a yearly horror story for the residents of Yukimo Village, nestled in the mountains near the Sacred Pinnacle, where Amatsu calls home. This area is rack with crimson red thunderclouds, with storms, with torrential downpour, with gale force winds. It is a harsh place, it is inhospitable, but it is the throne of this majestic entity. And Amatsu once a year comes to visit its nest atop the sacred pinnacle. No one knows where it is the rest of the time. But sure as the sun will rise, sure as the calendar will turn and flitter by, Amatsu will come every year. And with Amatsu comes the storm, comes horrific, lashing, pouring rain, comes darkness, comes destruction, as houses are torn apart, as trade can no longer safely travel, as monsters are dispersed and forced away from the mountain, lest they find themselves caught in the tempest that now nestles above. In fact, this phenomenon is what brought Zenoga to the forefront of the Hunter's Guild. It was an ignored species. They were aware of it, sure, but they didn't research it, they didn't really hunt it, they didn't really care about it. And that was nothing personal towards the Zenoga, it just didn't really interact with humans ever. It peacefully lived in its mountain forest, having a right old time. But then Amatsu claimed the territory, and the Zenoga, very upset with the Amatsu, SERIOUSLY WHAT THE HELL MAN SUCKS! <laughs> Amatsu's ground now! Had to leave, lest they be decimated. So now you've got a whole colony of very upset, 
angry and soaked thunder puppies rampaging far and wide in unfamiliar territory, leading to a lot of them needing hunting before a lot of people needed burying. So of course, many hold Amatsu as legend in a Yukimo village in the mountains near the sacred pinnacle. It very, very much is written into the very folklore of the people live there. They believe it to be the avatar of storm, more than just an animal, but an actual harbinger of the thunder season, and something that every year they must survive, ride out, and hope to see and live to the other side of. That is the effect Amatsu has. And I feel like it would be a very sweet little answer to the question, where does it spend the rest of the year, to be like, well, it floats on over to this mysterious new landmass that Rise takes place in. Not the old world, not the new, but something different entirely. But enough of that, let's dig down right deep into Amatsu. <laughs> So that beautiful crackling chest is uh, where the storm vesicle hides. And this is, well, Amatsu's secret weapon. It is an organ shaded jade that can control the storm to an intensity and mastery that makes Kashala's winds look, well, just cute. So how does Amatsu do this? Well, this organ stores a vast amount of water, and within that, it essentially becomes a cloud generator for a Matsu. It can, in a very localized space around it, alter the weather. It can whip up tempest, start rain, and generally create the perfect environment for it to exist in. Amatsu is born for the air. Its limbs are simply vestigial remnants of its ancestors which were more landbound. But Amatsu, thanks to its light frame, hollow bones, and huge amount of frills and fins and flappy bits, which are perfect for catching the wind, much like the skin flaps of a flying squirrel catch the breeze as it goes tree to tree. You never know when a comparison into skin flaps might come in handy in a Monster Hunter lore video. Anyway, this then lets Amatsu not have the usual effect of something caught in a storm, which is to say, Oh my god, please! Oh my god, I'm just not gonna fall and I'm gonna die! No, it rides the winds, it can power through them, it is incredibly strong, its tail propelling it as it angles its body and its fins to cut through the wind, allowing it to lift and direct it. Essentially, imagine being able to create your own tornadoes and then expertly surf them wherever you go. That is what the Amatsu do. And it can angle this wind generation to propel itself, to enable it to surge at you at cataclysmic speeds and then strike and as it strikes it doesn't just use its own physical power though that is great it also releases some of this stored water to have crashing waves aid in its assault it essentially is like a very fast windy flying sponge that just slaps you over and over but then I feel like doesn't do that much justice to the mighty beauty that is a Matsu and beauty is the key here, because as terrifying as he can be, I mean, look at that. And not just visually, Amatsu has the best roar in the entirety of Monster Hunter. <laughs> oh, come on! It, it, it... Is there a better roar? Because there's not! There's not- No, no, no! Shh! 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 Yeah, but what about- Shh. Seriously, though, think Shh. about- But you can't dismiss Shh. ever- Damn it, you just have to- And there is no arguing that. There simply just isn't. But Hamatsu then can go a little bit further. This is a legendary elder dragon on the sacred pinnacle. An avatar of storms. Hamatsu's appearance is accompanied by furious cyclones and horrific storms. Its fearsome power is said to outscale that of natural disasters. And what happens when you make a living natural disaster very, very angry?
Well, its fins flush with blood, displaying red spots as vengeance it becomes its sole focus. The storm vesicule crackling at its chest takes on a more reddish orange hue, the crackling more intense. The horns, the crest, the crown of this king start to shine a golden glow. A glow so potent it has been misinterpreted for sun rays breaking through otherwise gloomy grey clouds. This is the final stand of Amatsu, and in this state it can unleash its ultimate attack. Compressing and compressing water into a dense ball that it then unleashes in a beam of water with such power that it slices through rock like a hot glavenous tail through butter. Though for all this said, Amatsu can very much control the intensity of its storm, and a lot of the time it is a lot calmer than you might imagine, and thus, well, the storm itself calms too. In fact, keeping this creature calm is very much a, you know, survival strategy for all of the humans that live nearby the uh, sacred pinnacle. But once it is angered, it stays that way for a long, long time, and thus it needs hunting if the environment is to at all return to normal before it's all destroyed for many, many years to come. And once Amatsu does fall, once it is slain, the storm does disperse almost straight away, proving the mastery and control that when living, this creature had. But there are, of course, more tricks to this dragon. It can absorb wind towards it at a furious pace, creating a suction-like vacuum attack, drawing all enemies right underneath it before blasting them with a point-blank tornado that it then uses to carry itself round and round and round, slamming into any who evaded the initial impact and then ascending to the air, safe hidden behind its barrier before returning to the ground. It can send twisters all around it. It can fire compressed globs of water that explode outwards. Generally, it has a lot of ways to ruin your day and no hesitation in employing all of them. So that is Amatsu, the Storm Dragon. Just utterly captivating. Something so beautifully designed and something so satisfying to fight. Something so powerful, yet so unique. And something that really does need to be seen again and again and again. And I feel like I don't really need to say much as to why it would be the perfect fit for Rise. A flying leviathan riding the gale as you try and wire bug through tornadoes themselves to get to it. Because the thing is, Amatsu, while amazing, the fight itself, it's a good fight, but you do spend a lot of time just, like, nibbling at the bits of fins and the head that's a bit closer to the ground. So being able to really get up there in the air with it, attack its back, and interact with it on its own turf, as it were, would be an absolutely fantastic experience. Because Amatsu, unlike monsters that can go in the air, is just the air, it is in the air, it is the air riding monster. So for a game all about wire bugging, it is just too much of a match made in heaven. And I think it would really open up the ability for a Matsu's best ever version. And I think it would be that by a long way. I think an Amatsu, given a Rise makeover, tailored the fight to the Wirebug system, could very well end up being one of the best fights in all of Monster Hunter. And that is something that I dearly need to see. It really, really is. 
And honestly, I think a Matsu would work in a air quotes normal map. I don't think it would need an arena map, maybe not in Rise. I think you could have it on the Storm Ruins. You could have the entire map be racked with these crimson storms signifying its presence. And the idea of running from zone to zone as it soars above you and the thunder strikes rain pours. It would just be one hell of an atmosphere, oppressive, and you would feel it. It would be heart pounding. And because it flies, you get away with terrain issues that might stop other previous arena monsters. You can have it glide over the ground. You can have it glide between zones. You can really use it to its fullest when put in Rise and its mechanics. Also, imagine Wyvern riding it. You're literally on a hover monster that you can control, assuming we can Wyvern ride Elder Dragons, but that is just amazing to imagine. In any case, let me know what you think then of Amatsu, if you'd like to see him once more, and how you would place him within Rise. But until next time, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Please support the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and I will see you soon. A good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye.